your grace, the opportunity to this side of heaven, God, to just worship you in spirit and in truth, God, today I pray, God, that you bless everyone in our parking lot, all the ones that may be listening, so I pray, God, that you just uh, touch them in a very special, special way, God, today, bless the preaching hour, all the songs of Zion, stir us and let us leave this property, God, differently than the way we came, and we'll love you and thank you for all that you do, in Christ's name we pray. And God's people said...
many of you glad to be at the house of God today? Let's hear those horns. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming out to be with us. It's a joy to be here and get to do this one more time. I want you to do, uh, do me a favor. If you're on Facebook and things like that, I want you to go to the church page. And I want you to check in. Uh, you can do that. I also want you to share the video. Share the video uh, that's streaming right now. We want to be able to reach as many people uh, as we can. And uh, that will allow us to do that. We do appreciate uh, all of you being faithful uh, to be here. And uh, I want to uh, say this. Um, I got two things. If you're in the parking lot, uh, two things for you especially. Uh, one is... Um, on the way out, uh, we've got somebody had a bunch of fresh eggs. I mean, I'm talking about dozens of fresh eggs, and we need to get rid of those. Those are uh, uh, fresh and wonderful. Yeah, we got honks going on about that. If you want one, yeah, you can honk. And you, uh, uh, They're over here on the side of the church. On the way out, be sure to uh, stop by and get those. Also, we have a gift uh, that was given uh, to, to the church. In honor of Ronnie and Becky Hawkins, and uh, we appreciate them, we love them, and uh, we want to make mention of that. We certainly do appreciate uh, all that. Now, here, let me do this. Uh, if you're here today for the first time, let's hear, hear, hear a, a horn honk. All right. If you're here today, maybe uh, just the second time, or you've been here a few times, let's hear those horns, horns honk. Hey, if you're if you're here all the time, let's hear those horns. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, well, we certainly appreciate that. Now, this is a song that uh, every one of you ought to know. Try to pick a song that you'd know without having to look up words or anything like that. This is an anthem of the church, and it just says uh, this: "Amazing grace." How sweet the sound that saved a rich like me. So let's sing together. Let's worship out there in the cars. Thank you for coming to church. Amazing grace. How
Because he found me in a mess. He found me messed up, dirty, and filthy. But he washed me. And this morning, I'm clean. I'm forgiven of my past. I'm washed in the blood. And I'm clean before a holy God, before a thrice holy God. Somebody ought to go to church with us this morning. Aren't you glad you've been washed? Amen.
Thank you. Didn't they do a good job? They do a good job every week. Really Amen. Now, uh, if you find your Bible or go on your Bible app, um, we do have a, uh, there's an event on the Bible app page. And uh, if <clears throat> Brother Rob, if you'll help me with these right here, I appreciate that. Um, you can follow right along, but... Uh, uh, we're going to jump just a little bit around today. Luke chapter number 19. Uh, Luke chapter number 19. And we're going to see what the Lord has for us here uh, this morning. It, uh, we could look now and say it's been good to be in the parking lot, hasn't it? Amen. Amen. You know, I'm learning a lot of things about the... Uh, uh, serving God and what uh, what it is to serve the Lord and all that. And um, I love being in church. I love going to church. But I found out that He's a God that is a God outside of the church as well. He's a God. Amen. He's a God that will meet you in the parking lot if you come to meet Him in the parking lot. Amen. Yeah. Uh, John chapter, or Luke rather, chapter number 19, Luke chapter 19, and going to read a very familiar portion of scripture. The Bible said, and as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. When he was come nigh, even now, at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice of worship when we come before the King of Kings. I heard of this little boy went to church and uh, he went to church all the time. Well, he got bad sick and uh, it was right before Easter and he, he went to uh, his family went to church and him and his mom had to stay home. Well, Dad and the rest of the uh, brothers and sisters came back from church. When they did, they had these palm branches in their hands. And he said, what are those? What's that for? Where'd you get those? 
He said, well, we, they said, well, we got them at church when Jesus come right walking down the aisle. We throw them down in the aisle. And he walked over them. He said, you mean to tell me the week I don't show up to church, Jesus shows up? Hey, hey, I'm here to tell you that we ought to be faithful in this thing of praising God, whether we feel it like it, whether we don't feel like it, whether it's good or whether it's bad. We ought to just give him some praise in the house. There was a lady that had gone. She had moved. She was trying to find a church that uh, would be a help and try to be uh, try to be a blessing. And she uh, she find, found a church. She started going to, and she liked the preacher and she liked the singing. She liked all that, but it was real quiet, real dry. There wasn't no horn honking going on over there. There wasn't no shouting. There were no amens going on. And uh, but she just loved the Lord and she loved to worship Him. And so she went to this church, and uh, every time the choir would get to singing real good, she'd throw her hand up. The first time she'd done that, somebody thought she had a question. And, and she'd throw her hand up. She'd say, praise the Lord. She'd say, hallelujah. The preacher get to preaching real good. Uh, and, man, yeah, she, she'd just throw both hand, hands up. Hallelujah. Preach, preacher, preach. Well, this is a, a, a dry church, a quiet church, and... And the deacons had come to her and said, Now, I know that uh, we, we, we believe you're trying to pray. You're trying to do uh, the right thing. Said, but you're just going to have to tone it down. You're just going to have to be a little bit more quiet. And said, well, that, that's okay. And so she tried her best. And he she said, I'll tell you what. If you'll be quiet all the way up through Easter, we've got a brand new uh, we've got a lady in the church. She makes the most wonderful quilts, most beautiful quilts. And said, if you'll be quiet all the way up through Easter, when the Easter crowd's here, you don't get all sideways and scare them. Said, you, uh, we'll give you a, a, one of those quilts. She said, well, I'll do my best. And man, it, uh, it just got closer and closer to Easter. And finally on Easter, it had a big crowd, the choir got up and sang, done wonderful. The preacher got to preaching about Jesus, got to preaching about how that Jesus loved him and how that Jesus died for them and how that Jesus gave his all for them and how on that first resurrection morning, Jesus got up victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And she couldn't hold it any longer. She stood up right there at the pew, threw both hands up, and no quilt. I say quilt or no quilt. Let me share this with you and I'll be done. Look with me. A little while on this idea and this thought, Jesus said, if they don't praise me, the rocks will. Hey, hey, I like what you're saying over there. It said, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. That's the word of God I, on a plaque over there. Praise the Lord for that. I, but I ask a question this morning. Would the rocks cry? What would the rocks cry? I believe every one of us in this parking lot, I believe every one of us that's come around uh, this way should rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because of the testimonies we find here in these rocks. I'll try to be just as quick as I can. In Exodus chapter 17, in Exodus chapter 17, the Bible said there in verse number 3, the people thirsted there for water. Moses are, are, has taken the children of Israel and he's leading them into the promised land. They have wilderness, the Bible said in verse 1, of sin. And it's, they're in a desert place. They're in a desert land. There's no water there. And the Bible said in verse number 3, the people thirsted there. Verse number 4 said, And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. 
Now you gonna tell me that wasn't a group of Baptists. Man, they was ready to throw stones at the preacher. They was ready to take the preacher out. Uh, you done led us out here to die in the other place. They said, would to God we died by the flesh pots of Egypt. But you brought us out here to die in the wilderness. And notice what the Bible said. The Lord said unto Moses, go before the people. Take with thee the elders of Israel and thy rod. Uh, where thou smotest the river, take it in thy hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Oreb, and thou shalt smite the rock. There shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so. I believe the first rock, if it was going to talk to us, if it had a, a testimony time, it would simply say this. No matter how dry there is, no matter how dry there is refreshment. We live in a day uh, and we live in an hour uh, where if you're going to feed yourself uh, and you're going to have to, you're going to get a drink, uh, you're going to have to do it by yourself many times. Uh, you're going to have to go uh, to the well uh, that has watered you uh, and sustained you before. Uh, but can I tell you this, uh, that well has not run to tell you uh, that no matter how dry you get, uh, there is refreshment uh, down uh, at the house of God. Uh, there's refreshment uh, around the things of God. Uh, there's refreshment uh, in the Word of God. Uh, there's refreshment uh, in the presence of God. Uh, no matter how dry you get, uh, there is refreshment. What would the rocks cry? What would the rocks say to us? This morning, number one, no matter how dry there is refreshment. Let me ask you this. Are you dry? Have you found yourself parched in this day and hour that we're living in? So many news broadcasts, so many talking heads, commentators, everybody is giving you their opinion and giving you their angle of things. But I ask you this. Have, have you been to the rock? Have you came for a drink from the rock? <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you a story. Years ago, we were on our way home from Cherry Grove, just, out, just north Myrtle there. Most of you know where that's at. We're on our way home from there. And there was a precious little lady. Her name was Mama Bradshaw. Mama Bradshaw at that time had to be up in her 80s, possibly 90. And uh, every year on the way home, they would always go by this natural spring. They would, they'd stop there. And they'd go fill up their uh, water bottle, water jug, whatever they had. They'd fill it up from water of this spring. And I'll never forget seeing this. She was sitting in the back seat of a little bitty car, and her little wobbly hand held this big old jug out the window just to shake it. And she was hoping that they'd take her jug and go fill it up for her. And her son-in-law, he was well up in age, but he walked over a big posted sign on a tree, said, the well, is contaminated. Don't drink from the well. And I'll never forget how sad it was as I watched her little hand, trembling hand, pull that jug back in the car. She wouldn't get the drink of that spring that she'd always drank from. Well, it wasn't too many years that God called her home. And I can tell you right now, she's drinking from a fountain that will never run dry. She's drinking. Hey, hey, I'm here to tell you there's a fountain you fill with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood and lose all their guilt and stain. I'm glad to tell you I found refreshment down at the rock. Somebody give us some praise. No matter how dry there is refreshment. Are you dry this morning? Do you need 
refreshment, no matter how defeated, there is revival. Look in 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse number 40. Or verse 10 rather. Verse 10 said, And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now here's the mighty army of Israel. Here's the mighty king of Israel. Here are all the warriors, the choice men of Israel, the mighty men, and they're cowering to this giant. They're cowering to this situation that's going on in their life. And I couldn't help but think that's a lot like what we find today. There's a giant, and his name is Satan. And he wants to scare you, and he wants to strike fear into your heart and fear into your life. But can I tell you that there's a, hallelujah, there's a David coming, and he's telling us, and he's telling you, no matter how defeated you feel, I'm glad to tell you, there can be revival in your soul. There can be a, a raising up, a rising up, a down deep on the inside of you. David said, who is this Philistine that he would defy the armies of a holy God? He said, give me a rock. Give me my sling. I took out a lion. I took out a bear. And he's nothing. In the sight of my God, He said, "You come, to, you come to me in the, with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord." He took that old sling and he threw that rock, and that giant fell down. I'm telling you what, the giants will fall in your life. God is still able to raise us up. Somebody, give him some praise. No matter how defeated, there is revival. Miss Carolyn's, call, there you are right there. Miss Midge, Terry, I can't say very many more. But back in 2004, God called me here. I didn't know that's what he was doing. I was just coming to preach because I like to preach. And... God was calling me here. When I showed up here in February of 2004, this is my home church, and we had gone through all kinds of mess. When I showed up here in February of 2004, there's just a handful of broken-hearted saints of God that were weary in the battle and weary in the way. And I remember looking, it was 10 or 15 maybe, counting me and my wife that were there that first Sunday. And Sunday, we watched God and we believed God and we prayed and we asked God. And we begged God. And I look around, there's a whole lot more cars sitting in the parking lot than where there were people in the, in the sanctuary back then. What I'm here to tell you is what you might look at and think it's defeated. What you might look at and think it's over with. I'm here to tell you that God has a way of turning things around. God is able. No matter where you hey, hey, No matter what you come from. No matter how defeated. There is revival that's available. I'll give you this last one. Y'all about to preach me to death with them horns. Amen. But I like it. Praise the Lord. I like them uh, posters and I like all of it. I even like to wave the little flag myself. Amen. He deserves our praise. If a rock can do it, why can't you do it? If a rock would do it, why won't we do it? Somebody give me some praise. No matter how defeated, there is revival. Here's the last one. In John chapter number 11. We all know the story. 
Jesus had some friends, Mary, Martha, and they had a brother and his name was Lazarus. Lazarus had fell and fallen sick. And Jesus waited around. They thought, well, if, why, if he's waiting, he'll be all right. Finally, he said, he's sleeping. They said, well, certainly he's okay. And he said, no, you don't understand. He's dead. He said, but I'm going so that you can see the power of God. And the Bible said there in verse 39 of John 11, Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead lay. And when he had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. I heard some preacher say this a long time ago, and I believe it's true. I believe the reason that Jesus cried out, Lazarus, is because had he not called out that name, everybody in that tomb would have came out of that grave. I believe there's power in the name of Jesus. I believe that no matter how dead there is re re resurrection. I believe that last drop would tell us, you ain't going to believe this, but I was put up against a tomb. I was put up and, hit, and there was dead people behind me. They were weeping. They were willing. But I saw it with my own eyes. No matter how dead you think a situation is, there is resurrection. Several years ago, God gave me this little thought, and I'll finish, I'll finish here. The, so many of us want to hide our death, hide our stink, hide our nastiness, and cover it up. But if you're going to get healing, if you're going to see resurrection, you're going to have to show Jesus where you buried it. He said, where have you laid him? Take away the stone. Some of us are in this, in this parking lot. And right now, God is speaking to you. God is calling you. But you will not receive and you will not experience resurrection power in your life until you show him the grave. I'm thinking about Eric and Georgette there. They, uh, Miss Georgette started coming to church here just a little bit and wasn't a, a week or so, just not long at all. She brought her husband Eric with her. And Eric bowed his head as a sinner and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of his life. God, yeah, that's all right. God changed his life. But the story don't, don't stop there. See, when they, when they first started coming, they had some problems going on in their life, in their relationship, in their marriage. And it'd be easy for us to gloss it over. It'd be easy for us to say, well, it, it, it'll be all right. We don't need to talk about that. But thank God, Eric, thank God that you had a wife that showed him the tomb. That, uh, that rolled the stone away and said, here's the nasty, here's the messed up. I'm glad, hallelujah, no matter how dead, God can give resurrection. The, uh, this past Wednesday night, I hadn't had a chance to share this with y'all. This past Wednesday night, if you remember, on Thursday, I celebrated being saved for 31 years. When, Wednesday, on Wednesday night, I preached a message around that and about, about that and about salvation and how that God can make a change in your life and all that. 
when we went home and uh, after church and just was relaxing, taking it easy. And next thing I know, our youngest daughter, Katie, come into the living room crying, went to her mama. And she was crying. She said, Mama, I don't know if I'm saved or not. And so she began to talk. We never try to talk them into it. We don't try to talk them out of it. We let God deal with them. And, and she got to talking to her and dealing with her. And she said, Katie, if you need to be saved, you can be saved. And she said, Mommy, I need to be saved. And she, hallelujah. She bowed her little head, began to pray and call out on God. And I tell you, even growing up in the preacher's home, even not knowing anything but the house of God, no matter how dead, God can raise you up, make you a new preacher. Hey, hey, bless his name. I say hallelujah. Hey, hey, what you know that God is in the same business. <laughs> hallelujah. Y'all play something real soft for me there. It's real, it's always difficult to do this in this environment, but we're going to do our best. If you don't have your window cracked, you can crack it now. Right now, where you're at, how many of us would do this? God, I just want to throw up my hand and I want to thank you. And I want to praise you for saving me. Here I am. How many hands are going up outside the windows? Here's my hand. God, thank you for reaching down and saving me. Thank you, God, for what you've done in my life. I love you, Jesus. You can put them down if you want to. If you're here and you need God to do something real for you, today I want, I'm going to ask you to do this I want you to put your emergency blinkers on or your headlights and I'm going to come around to where your car is and I'm going to pray while they sing so I'm going to start over here and I'm going to come and pray I'm not going to come and touch you getting in your car but I'm going to just believe God with you and believe God for you. Come on, let's worship.
breathing inside my chest. Oh, I'm coming alive with joy and destiny. Christ is your Savior. I'm going to... Many years ago, 31 years ago, I prayed a prayer just like this. And I meant it in my heart. When I did, the Lord heard my prayer. The words that I'm getting ready to pray will not do one thing for you as long as they're my words. But if you'll mean them in your heart, the Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you'll pray a prayer like I'm getting ready to pray and mean in your heart, the Lord will hear your prayer. He'll come into your heart, change your life. Let's pray that prayer. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I've failed you, I've messed up, I've done wrong. You know that, and I know that. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and change me. Wash me. Make me clean. Oh, I want to sing that song too. I want to be clean. God, wash me in the blood 
Oh, Jesus. I believe he came. I believe he died. I believe he rose again. Jesus, I'm asking you, come into my heart and save me. With heads bowed and eyes closed, real quiet. Well, someone will get to you on the live stream. But if you're here in the parking lot and you prayed that prayer, and this morning you asked Jesus to be your Savior, I want you just to beat that horn just real quick. All right. If the Lord's dealing with you and you need to know more about salvation, I'm going to be here for a while. You hang out. I'll be glad to share the Word of God with you. How many of you are glad you came to church today? Amen. All right, two things. Uh, ushers, uh, let me get you by the, uh, by the exits. And um, uh, Joe, if you will, grab a box of those eggs on the way over there. And uh, Joey... Can I get you to grab, there's two boxes, grab one box and take it up there to Larry, whoever's in that truck right there, Joey. Uh, yeah, I'm talking to you, praise the Lord. So on the way out, you can give. Uh, also, we have a bunch of those. Make sure that you get those. Here's, here's something I learned. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily a, a country boy, and uh, I learned this. Oh, those are. trust him just at base. Yeah, amen. I learned that on those eggs, those are fresh eggs. You put them in cold water. If they float, throw them away. Is that right? And, and then, secondly, don't wash them until you're getting ready to use them. All right? And they'll stay fresh longer. You put them in your refrigerator and all that stuff. Uh, they've got those. Uh, somebody will help us with those, with those cartons. All right? So be very careful on your way out. I'll be standing by one of these exits here, and I want to speak to you before you leave. Uh, the ushers have the chicken buckets. You either put money in there or put chicken in, or you ain't leaving. Amen. Give me some music for my stroke. <laughs>